today is network security tutorial but before we actually begin be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that bell notification icon so you don't miss out on any updates from us also be sure to hit that like button as well because we create content like this every day right and uh, with that out of the way let's begin so firstly uh, we'll talk about the network security concepts that you need to know before we actually get to the tutorial part so network security is quite a broad field of study right so uh, we need to understand firstly what is a computer network right so uh, we are protecting something we need to understand what we are protecting so a computer network essentially is a group of computers that use a set of common communication protocols over digital interconnections for the purpose of sharing resources located on or provided by the network nodes right so imagine you have a lot of computers uh, in a particular office space together right you take LAN wires you connect uh, all of them uh, to a server right so what will happen is essentially all of those computers can share their resources can share data files can share other things as well such as uh, uh, processor uh, resources server resources ram and whatnot right so when you connect all of them together you are creating a network of computers so that is called a computer network right and if the server has access to the internet all of the computers will have access to the internet if configured properly so now that we understand what a computer network is we need to understand network security as well so network security essentially is defined as the implementation of technologies processes and protocols designed to safeguard an individual's or organization's communication and information so naturally if you have a computer network uh, there is a possibility of the data being circulated around that network being leaked or some other uh, uh, interruption that happens within the network and you need to prevent that right so you implement uh, these protocols these technologies uh, which come under network security right so this is an entire field that deals with this particular issue so there are types of network security so firstly there's uh, network access control or the NAC so uh, network access controls is exactly what it is named it's basically to prevent other users from getting into the network who don't have the proper certificates or policies right so if your network has a policy for not allowing uh, strangers to basically visit your network without the proper authority so you're implementing network access control it is used to implement endpoint security on the nodes of the network then uh, we have antivirus and anti-malware softwares. So if you're running a computer network, naturally malwares, trojans and worms are a threat to your network as well because they can uh, basically expose your network to outsiders, to intruders, to attackers, right? So you want uh, technologies that can prevent that. So these particular softwares would prevent that. You can basically create your own computer network and deploy this uh, software on all of the nodes that are present on your network and uh, you can effectively stop the spread of viruses or the spread of malware through that means then we have a uh, firewall protection now firewall protection basically means that uh, your computer basically deals with two network activities the first is outbound activity the second is inbound activity so uh, basically that means that uh, your computer has a particular number of ports that are open for application interactions with the internet with the network with the rest of the network you can go ahead uh, and basically uh, create some rules that restrict your private network or uh, restrict you from uh, basically being exposed to the public network as well from uh, mostly where you're concerned is inbound activity so basically uh, any uh, external network any external server any external website or application that tries to ping your network or ping your particular node and uh, try to get some information out of your particular node or try to install something onto your particular node if your inbound rule 
rules uh, of your firewall do not allow anything other than the particular things that you actually allow your firewall will effectively stop that so that is what the firewall essentially does it also does the same for outbound activity so basically uh, if you're restricting your uh, employees from basically accessing anything uh, outside uh, of their office work or uh, your school uh, students from uh, accessing anything outside of their study material you can impose that onto the firewall as well then we have uh, virtual private networks. Now, virtual private networks essentially help uh, people to hide their original uh, identity on a network. So basically means that they tunnel uh, in a network and uh, basically come through different nodes, at attached to different nodes and basically mask their original IP and their original MAC address and uh, get access to the network without actually having to reveal any uh, information about them. This also ensures a end-to-end and encrypted setup so that means that anybody trying to access the information being shared to and fro uh, outside of a VPN tunnel cannot actually access it so what is the need for uh, network security so the need for network security is quite uh, prominent so if you are a sender and you have a message that you want to send to your receiver right the recipient and you're sending that message through email so uh, naturally your first course of action would be to simply send the email this is what you think the email diagram looks like you simply send it to the recipient but there's a problem if there's an intruder and your network is basically compromised if somebody else has access uh, has access to that network right and uh, they can basically track your email so they would get the email as well now if this email contains sensitive company relevant information this could be extremely harmful for your organization so you don't want that so uh, your intruder is able to read your data you do not want that so this liability uh, could be small. It could not mean anything if somebody else gets access to their data or it could be really huge as well, right? So uh, this could lead to monetary losses. If the competitor company gets access to your sales information, your customer information, uh, your strategies, this could lead to monetary losses. Uh, if somebody basically uh, files a case on you for uh, uh, basically allowing their data to be leaked to the public or to the hacker uh, the court can also file a, a court can also rule uh, against you in that regard and then you'll have to pay uh, damages in uh, monetary revenue so that could also lead to loss and at the end of the day it leads to employee and uh, customer uh, dissatisfaction and distrust uh, in your organization if your organization does not have network security and uh, intruders and hackers are able to get the data Right. So all of this is something that you entirely don't want. And that is why you need uh, network security almost certainly. So uh, what you will do is we will basically lock your uh, line of connection between the sender and recipient so that intruders cannot access it. So this lock, essentially this metaphorical lock is what network security is. So let's talk about the CIA principles. Uh, this is not to be confused with the intelligence agency. These CIA uh, principles basically means uh, confidentiality. That means secrecy. So the data that is being transferred to and fro or the data that is being contained on the network should remain confidential uh, if needed, right? So that is the first principle of network security. The second is integrity. So the data should be whole. The data shouldn't be less than, uh, less than what it was and it shouldn't be more than than what it was uh, the data should be exactly identical to the original data that was there nobody should have been able to manipulate it the data should not have been lost to verify this we use checksums to verify this we use a lot of other uh, methods as well to check the sender to check the uh, basically the contents of the file uh, whether they are the same or not so this is integrity and finally we have availability so the data that has to be accessed should be available uh, to the intended recipients at all times at a very short notice so this data obviously needs to be accessed by the relevant people for the organization or the business to continue so the data should be available as well so aside from confidentiality and integrity you cannot keep this data stored away securely forever you need the data to be available as well on demand next up we have network security 
application layer. So there are layers involved in the TCP IP model of network security. So the relevant layers uh, would include firstly the application layer. Now this is the topmost layer uh, of uh, any network layer uh, model basically. So application layers basically means where you're interacting with the computer with the application. So that is the application layer, right? So application layer is an abstraction layer that specifies the shared communications protocols and interface methods used by hosts in a communications network. So application layer uh, refers to the endpoint data, right? So the endpoint data should be secured uh, when it reaches the other end uh, of anybody's uh, node, essentially. So if any attacker or intruder gets access to the data, he should not be able to access that data. The application layer uh, security measures deal with exactly that. So firstly, we'll see an example, which is called pretty good privacy. Now, pretty good privacy is the de facto email security utility used today. So in even in today's emails it was discovered in 1991 even in today's emails uh, we still use this pgp protocol uh, right it is used to encrypt sensitive emails and sensitive files if files are attached in that email so uh, this basically means that uh, you have a public key and a private key so the recipient basically generates the public and private key uh, so what will happen is the recipient will send the public key to the sender the sender will encrypt uh, the file that he's supposed to send with that public key and then send it to the recipient and the recipient will use their own private key that they generated to decrypt this particular email. Now, the private key is only uh, housed by the recipient. The sender does not have access to it. Nobody else has access to the private key. Uh, if the public key leaks, it does not matter because the private key is needed to decipher the message that has been sent. So then the recipient will decipher the message and then the recipient will have access to the actual intended message. So this is how PGP works. It is uh, it, it can work on symmetric uh, security measures as well. Uh, but this was an example of an asymmetric email uh, authentication system. Next up, we have the network security transport layer. Now, transport layer is the second layer effectively uh, in the diagram. So the transport layer is responsible for error-free end-to-end delivery of data from the source to the destination host. So this basically means the transport layer primarily deals with data integrity because it wants the data to be error-free. Right? It's not particularly responsible for the security aspect of things, but it wants the second principle of the CIA principles called integrity. Right, So that is what the uh, transport layer essentially deals with. So let us see one of the examples uh, of the transport layer called the secure socket layer. The secure socket layer is now transformed into the transport uh, sec layer security, which is the uh, successor to the SSL uh, protocol essentially so the tls is used today so tls is a cryptographic protocol designed to provide communication security over a network so it basically tells you that the website has integrity so the any web server that you're trying to access any web application that you're trying to access over the internet essentially uh, will have an ssl security certificate if they don't have that certificate uh, your web browser will automatically tell you that this website is not secure and it is not recommended to proceed forward uh, i'm sure you must have seen that whenever you try to log into a website some website uh, you might come across once that has this uh, message on google chrome which is which says that the connection is not private uh, because it does not have an ssl security certificate right so TLS is essentially that cryptographic protocol that ensures that the website has SSL certificate, right? So this is a communication, uh, this is used to provide communication security over a network. So let us look at the diagrammatic representation of this. So the client, uh, which means you, who is trying to access the website will send a hello message, right? Uh, the server will send a hello message and then the server will then send the certificate to your web browser, the SSL certificate that it has. Your web browser will then authenticate that certificate essentially uh, by checking uh, in the database if the certificate actually exists, is it genuine? 
when the certificate has been authenticated the server hello has been done the client will then uh, provide the key exchange to create an end-to-end -end encrypted transmission between the client and the uh, website in question right so the client will uh, essentially start the key exchange process the key generation will happen on the client's end as well uh, as the website's end and once the keys have been exchanged the cipher exchange has been finished uh, on both ends then the secure protocol has been established because all messages all uh, security communications uh, from then on will be encrypted and they will not be decipherable by any outside attacker or intruder so essentially all the interactions that you have from within the website are encrypted in nature and nobody else can have access to it unless of course your uh, isp is tracking you unless of course your employers are tracking you that is a different case because they are tracking you from the client's end they're not tracking you from the website's end so let's look at a network layer the last layer uh, in this particular tutorial so the network layer essentially deals uh, in the tcp ip model at least the network layer deals with the combination of the physical layer and the data link layer of the osi model now here the physical layer refers to the actual physical connection uh, between your uh, host and the recipient host that is the actual physical connection and the data link layer essentially refers to the data synchronization layer where it is ensured that the data that you're sending is actually sent to the uh, receptive layer in a receptive uh, host or the receptive node in particular in a particular order right so both of those functionalities have been combined uh, in the tcp ip model and it is called the network layer so it is responsible for mapping IPs into physical addresses. So in a particular network, you have your IP addresses, your local IP addresses, and then you have the MAC addresses, which are also called the physical addresses, right? So uh, in any particular network, once the pinging has been done, once the network has been mapped up, right? So the IPs are mapped to their devices respective uh, mac addresses right so uh, whenever you're trying to send a packet over a network the network layer ensures that the ips are mapped to their appropriate physical addresses so they are sent to the correct uh, physical address uh, when they are sent next up uh, they are mainly responsible for transmitting data between two devices on the same network by encapsulating IP datagrams into frames. So uh, each layer, uh, does a, as we go lower in the network diagram, each layer adds a little something to the packet that is being sent. So the application layer will, will deal with the most minimum amount of information. That information is then wrapped up in the transport layer, and then it is wrapped up further in the network layer into datagrams, uh, essentially. So uh, the, the, the datagrams are wrapped up into frames, essentially, when they reach the network layer so this is what happens now these frames can be sent over the physical layer the physical connection between these two particular uh, nodes that are uh, transferring data to and fro so lastly uh, we will deal with uh, ip security uh, with uh, ipsec so this is a example this is an example of the transport layer protocol uh, applications this is called ipsec now in computing internet protocol security ipsec is a secure network protocol suit that authenticates the and encrypts the packets of data to provide secure encrypted communication between two computers over a internet protocol network it is also used in virtual private networks as well the vpn and uh, it is used to encrypt application layer data so whatever uh, application layer data is being sent uh, to the transport layer it is used to encrypt that it is used for router security as well so you have a lot of routers and switches present within your network to properly route the communications it is used to maintain router security as well by the uh, applying the protocols that it has and then it is used for authentication purposes so it adds uh, authentication clauses to your particular datagram and uh, when it reaches the recipient the recipient checks those authentication uh, clauses to verify uh, whether this particular packet is being sent from the right person or not and then virtual private networks through ipsec tunneling so ipsec also provides tunneling uh, in order for you to create a virtual private networks and the tunnels that are required to initiate them and encapsulating security payload esp is one of the components of 
uh, IP security. So it provides data encryption, uh, data encryption, data integrity, authentication, and anti-replay. It also provides authentication for payload. So that means that uh, data integrity is ensured uh, with the help of IPsec, which means data that is sent is uh, maintained in its original format. Encryption uh, is an optional feature. You can also implement encryption when you're dealing with encapsulating security payload, the ESP part of IP security. Authentication, which means that uh, if you are the intended recipient, then only you can uh, open up the message. You cannot message. Uh, you cannot open the message otherwise. And uh, it is also used to ensure that the message that is being sent is being sent from the right person. And anti-replay, so that means that the message once seen uh, gets automatically deleted. Right, so this is also implemented in Telegram if you're aware of that particular application. So once the message has been seen, it gets automatically deleted so that that message cannot be shared further uh, and the intended, intended recipient can see it and then the message is done and nobody else can see that message. It also provides authentication for payload. So whatever the contents of the message is, that is also authenticated whether that is correct or not. Authentication header. Now, this is the second part of IP security. It's also uh, abbreviated as AH. It also provides data integrity, authentication, and anti replay, and it does not provide uh, encryption, right? So, if you don't want to implement encryption in your particular message, uh, then you can go with the authentication header method. The anti replay protection protects against unauthorized transmission of packets, it does not protect. Uh, data confidentiality. So that means that since uh, this particular uh, protocol does not implement encryption, it cannot ensure data confidentiality. So these are the two aspects of uh, IP security. IP security. So uh, we have reached the part where we're going to be implementing the NMAP demo of network security. Let us understand what NMAP is first. So NMAP is an open source and free utility for discovering network elements and security auditing compatible with all major operating systems like Windows, Mac OS and Linux. So essentially you can use NMAP to understand the topology of your network, how many devices are connected, if there are any strange devices that are connected. If you're a hacker, if you're an ethical hacker or an hacker, you can use it to discover hosts on the target network as well. So that is the function of the NMAP application application, right? So we look into that as we move and proceed with the tutorial. So currently I have my NMAP GUI open. So firstly, uh, we're going to understand uh, how we can detect all of the ports, uh, all of the services that might be open or to confirm whether a particular host exists on a network or not. So firstly, I'll ping a particular IP, which is of the Windows Server 2016. So I'll ping this IP by typing the IP address in the local uh, network and I'll write the nmap command that I want. So in this particular case, I'll write SN and capital PU, right? And then I'll put in the IP address again. I think I'll put it over here again and then put it over there, right? So when I click on scan, it will first check whether the host is there or not. And then as we can see, it also says after scanning the network, whether the host is up or not, and we can see that it is up, right? So next up, uh, we can do something else with it. Uh, we can convert this particular into an ICMP echo ping scan. So by doing uh, PE instead of PU, we can uh, initiate that as well. So 10.10.10 .10 .10 dot 16 we type that and we click on scan so it does that and this is another way to basically detect if uh, any particular host uh, with a particular ip address of that sort exists or not we can also see the mac address for this particular ip address then the next thing that we can do is if we want to detect all of the IP addresses that are present within a particular range on a network, we can simply type the starting uh, uh, parameter of the range and then give a dash 
and then we can type the end parameter of the range and click on scan. So when we do that, we can see all of the hosts that are present within that range. So if any intruder exists within that range uh, in our particular network, we are we will be able to spot that particular intruder. So we can see that Nmap will help us with uh, network security with the various uh, options and commands that it has, uh, especially when we are trying to track down in if, if any particular suspicious activity is uh, present on the network or not, if any suspicious host is present on the network or not, or uh, if there are any security vulnerabilities on the system. So if it, any of those exist, we can simply see it over here in the Nmap application and go fix them so that they don't exist anymore. So this was it for the Nmap tutorial. We can see how well uh, we can uh, provide network security with the help of Nmap. There are a lot of other applications as well that lie in the cyber security domain to help us with network security such as Wireshark and NetScan uh, as examples, right? So uh, if you go ahead with the cybersecurity course or any course with that matter, you'll be introduced to these applications as well and see how they uh, implement network security on a network and how they can be used for ethical hacking as well and preventing hacking as well. If you've liked what you've seen, uh, you can apply for one of our courses in the cybersecurity domain where we cover cryptography and other such topics relevant to ethical hacking for our CEH certification training. You can contact our course advisors using the following contact details. They are available 24 seven. You can also call mail our sales team to inquire about any of our courses or have a live chat with our course advisors on our website uh, in telepath.com. So uh, other, one other thing, be sure to uh, sign up for our webinar. We uh, post videos like these daily. We host webinars like this daily. So be sure you sign up for that and not miss out on any content from us and actually have the ability to ask us live doubts uh, if you sign up for the webinars and attend our meetings, right? So uh, that is about it from IntelliPath. Hope you had a wonderful session. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you've liked what you've seen. Thank you and goodbye.